Falklands or Malvinas Petroleum. Or another title could be Oil Exploration in the Falklands Islands. We are live on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitter now. Good afternoon, Professor Cleveland Jones. A pleasure to have you in this uh, uh, podcast on Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me, Kamaya. It's very good to be here. It's a pleasure. This is the profile uh, bio of uh, Professor Cleveland. You can stop the video after and later and see in details. Professor Cleveland, uh, recent news says that oil has been discovered in the Falklands Islands. And obviously, this produced several types of reactions for, from both sides. For companies, uh, opportunities for important gains, of course. And uh, among the countries involved in this dispute, uh, some uncomfortable uh, reactions. So uh, let's start, please, with the geological uh, attractiveness for hydrocarbons in the region. Can you explain a little bit how how does it work in, in the region? Yes, you see, we don't often hear too much about the region because, of course, it's you know, way near the, the Antarctica region, but it's important because this is one more of the geopolitical uh, points that, that we have to consider as I will mention later, I, I don't think this is, you know, a major, major flashpoint. But if I could just, you know, uh, to put something here um, that, that you can see, because it, the every analysis that we look at has to take into consideration the underlying uh, oil and gas potential. Is this real? Is this significant? Is this... Um, something that, that we want to, to uh, face the risks of, of putting, putting uh, on there. Um, th this is an assessment that I've mentioned before to you in, in other occasions. The USGS has done a world assessment of oil and gas basins. They call them uh, assessment units in provinces. And they did this, for example, for South America region and, of course, all the basins that you know. And down there, way in the south, is, is the, uh, the, the region in question, you know, the, the Malvinas and, and the Falklands. And, and their assessment is uh, a mean assessment of 5 billion barrels of eventually, this is over the next 50 years or whatever, recoverable resources plus some gas so it's significant we're talking you know you know multi-billion dollar billion barrel accumulations that could eventually be produced now the half US brazil should, huh? half brazil size uh, half of the uh declared reserves of brazil but it's really only seven percent of the santos and campos basin assessment by the same USGS. So, you know, even in relation to the Brazilian basins, it's small. In relation to, for example, the total South American assessment, less than 4%, uh, it's it's a little bit more than, than you know, the, the one of the most interesting uh, Venezuelan um, assessment units, and, and also uh, a little bit more than Cuba which I mentioned because Cuba has problems and Venezuela has problems and the Falklands or the Malvinas has problems. So, you know, in a sense, we're comparing apples to apples and we're talking multi-billion barrel resources that could eventually be produced. This is uh, recoverable resources. But the USGS says nothing about whether it's really going to be produced because of economic uh, considerations geopolitical considerations, maybe even uh, environmental or technical considerations. So this is where I think we kind of part ways in, in a lot of the assessment units that, that they've done for the South American region, for example, because the Brazilian basins are eminently producible, uh, but maybe not so for the Venezuelan basins. And of course, I argue, uh, you know, the, the this region here is is uh, not so likely to have this uh, resource potential eventually be produced or not in its totality. Uh, this oil uh, was discovered before 
the the the, the 1982 war or after that? No, the, geologically, we've known about the provinces, you know, the, the geological um, structural uh, considerations, it's early tertiary, uh, you know, th this is not unusual for the region. Maybe the western uh, side of, of the, the Falklands or, or it, it's the Malvinas Basin is less attractive. We've known about this basin. It's just that we haven't had exploration uh, drilling uh, uh, drill holes into the, the region until 2010. So this is all uh, relatively recent, you know, 10, 15 years, say. And, and as uh, more exploration has been done, now we get to the point where uh, companies have uh, said that now oh, we have 2P reserves, you know. This is where, you know, may, maybe I can uh, go back to, to this presentation here um, because uh, here, if, if you look at, at uh, this situation, look, Argentina has, you know, claims to the region and so on, but the islands themselves are quite a ways away from Argentina. They're small islands. They have separate uh, areas of interest. The, the western side, um, which are the uh, less uh, petroleum potential, and maybe the eastern side and the north side, which has more petroleum potential. This right-hand image here is the north part with uh, you know, the, the hot issue nowadays is the sea lion uh, accumulation. Sure. Um, but, you know, if, if you put it into uh, geographical consideration, this uh -huh. is, you know, it, it's not an easy, uh, it's, it's not an easy situation. Uh, look, uh, on, the, on the left here, you can see we're almost into the Antarctica. Uh, you know, we're at the, at the tip of uh, Argentina and Chile. The geographical considerations are that it's near the Antarctic, you know, very far from mainland, uh, very uh, much more difficult to install uh, infrastructure. Equipment so, systems, yeah. Yeah. And um, the, the geographical point is that when we had the war back in, in, in 82, it, it wasn't easy for Argentina. It wasn't easy for the UK. Of course, they're much more powerful. Nowadays, just imagine, uh, very, very unlikely. If there were to be a war, again, logistical considerations would be horrible for both sides. You know, so but, in this case, uh, you know, geography plays a role. Luckily, it's yeah, but, way uh, far away from everything. But for the UK is much worse because uh, they are far from the islands and they do not have support from the the coast. I mean, from from Argentina, yes. sure. But but don't believe Argentina is in a much better situation because of course they have a much weaker navy. Their um, logistical I I didn't point them out here, but but their logistical uh, points of support for a navy. Uh, are way up north, Bahia Blanca has some, and you know, way, way, way far away. So, yeah, yes, there's a difference between 8,000 kilometers and, and 2,000. But, you know, in either case, uh, geography is is something that, that points to a very difficult situation, not only in a conflict, but as I was saying, to begin developing oil and gas infrastructure. Now, yeah. of course, once the, the resources were were explored and and the results were made public and they say oh you know we have a couple billion barrels of 2p reserves that that we can draw on and maybe you yeah. know produce some of that uh, you can say yes maybe that's not so significant so maybe uh, they can set up some kind of infrastructure in the island but that's not going to be infrastructure yep. to to, to yeah. support a large system but there is a point that uh, I would like to ask you about uh, uh, the companies that uh, was were involved in these uh, discoveries are Desire Petroleum, uh, Rock Hopper uh, Company. Is uh, all of them are British companies, and uh, so they they need support from very far yeah. from uh, uh, in terms of equipment systems, uh, people 
uh, how do you see this uh, capacity to operate in a far? Uh, uh... But, but Kavanya, uh, yeah, whether they're they're UK companies because they're the ones left. You don't see any major oil and gas companies there yeah, anymore. Right. Maybe way back when they nabbed a little bit. They said, "Oh, let's see what this is about." They saw that it was a couple billion barrels, but in that situation. If it was 40 billion barrels, maybe it would be worthwhile the big companies to come in. But it's not that size. And nowadays, as, as I've said many times, we have to concentrate exploration budgets from the major oil companies in safe areas, prolific areas, areas that will produce for a long time and have very favorable characteristics. This is not one of them. So what's left is you know the companies that, that are left with with th these areas and, and basically nowadays is uh, Rock Hopper and Navitas, um, you know they're minor companies and they have what they feel is is a good prospect. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, it, I might even mention this in, in relation to operations. They estimate something like two point something billion dollars in capital uh, capex. capex for small companies. That's a lot, yeah, especially a lot because they have to raise that in international markets that are going to put a premium yeah. on, you know, interest in the conflict area. Yeah. It's it's not going to be easy. Yeah, you know? if, they also estimate operational expenses at twenty dollars a barrel. Give me a break. Yeah. They're being very yeah. optimistic. You know? <laughs> very good point. Before we go to geopolitical considerations, oil geopolitics, uh, let me ask you about geological uh, characteristics of these reservoirs. I mean, uh, it's similar to what in Brazil, for instance? Um, no, I, I wouldn't say it's not like a pre salt region. It may be closer to the post salt, to the original uh, campus basin uh, right. fields. That Tra were, traditional basin campus. Yeah, and and what we might have is maybe even turbidites and, and sandstones that might might uh, provide reservoirs that would be more conventional and so on. But um, what what matters is the potential, the, the volumetric potential, yes. and the USGS assessment. It was done way back in 2012 and so on. But their assessments are great, and. Uh, since then, of course, you, you drill holes and what you can do is not necessarily improve on the overall assessment, but you can prove that the assessment was right. So what they've done is said, yes, there we have an accumulation that we could uh, explore. And, and of course, they will need an FPSO, not a large one, you know, 80, 100,000 yeah. barrels a day, so a, a smaller FPSO, but still it's a challenge. Yeah. Professor Cleveland, uh, how the USGS makes this uh, assessment with seismic, own seismic, they, they hired seismic from other countries, how good do they? Well, yes, uh, th there was uh, 2D seismic and so on from which you can get an idea of the underlying geological features uh, all the way back from the separation of Africa and, and South America. So it's not unusual to have this rise, you know, this course. And in, in that situation, you would expect to have uh, areas <clears throat> as they're separating that, that would be prone for accumulation of sediments that, that already have uh, source rock below that, that could create a petroleum system. And so the US just says, oh, uh, we, we believe it could vary indeed their assessment is something like one to 12 billion barrels. You know, it's saying we don't know, but you know, maybe five billion barrels is a good okay. estimate. So it's very uncertain. What these guys have done eventually with exploration, it says, yes, there is, it's more than one and it may not be 12. And, and who knows how much of that we can even take out yeah. from the underground. But you know, the geological framework was understood and they knew that if yeah. oil was going to be found, it was going to be found mostly in the eastern and northern sides, and that, that's mm -hmm. where, where they came up uh, with the discovery. So it's not surprises. It's you know good news for them, and it's not that surprising, but it's also not that enthusiastic because even the majors 
knew that. And they said, you know, they have to balance the pros and the cons. And if uh-huh. they say, well, in this area, we would have to find, you know, recoverable okay. uh, volumes that are easily produced and quickly yeah. because we want to get out of there before things go bad. And that's not the case. You know? Okay. Going to please uh, to the uh, geopolitical considerations and oil geopolitics too. Uh, uh, let, let me ask you, uh, which countries or what countries could be interested on this uh, situation more than England, UK and uh, the UK and, and, and Argentina? So well, the United States and other countries could yeah, be interested. Yeah, everybody's going to be solution? interested if uh, things get hot. You know, that, that's understandable. But it's eminently uh, UK and Argentina. But remember, the islands that the United, the, the United Kingdom claims is not just uh, the Falklands or the Malvinas. It's down below. They have, uh, it's called the Orkneys and the Shetlands and the Sandwich Islands. And, uh, you know, those islands are important because they give territorial claim to the Antarctic. And so that cone that I showed in the picture here, I don't know yeah, if we go back, piece, yes. this cone on the left-hand side, this is claimed by the UK based on these islands, not necessarily the, the Malvinas, but you know the, Shet- the, the Shetlands and all of these provide the basis for the UK to claim. And this is an important claim. This is a gigantic area. It's much but, more than the island. Oh, oh yes. But, but the problem there is that that claim entails Argentina and Chile's claim. No, so now it's not just Argentina and it's not just uh, Malvinas or Falklands, it's the Antarctic. And, and, and that, is, that cone is gigantic. Um, okay, you can say, so what? You know, penguins there, you know, ice shelf, that kind of stuff. But, you know, geopolitics wants territory. And that is a, a point that could eventually become a hot point as well. So in geopolitical considerations, you know, ever since the war, things uh, ended and there's been a tense diplomacy. Of course, and no, no more war, but, you know, Argentina and the UK are constantly there in the UN instances saying, oh, yeah. they can't do exploration. And then UK says, oh, but this is ours since 1908 or since 18 whatever. You know, these things haven't ended. These efforts, diplomatic efforts are there. So the geopolitics is an ongoing uh I wouldn't say a conflict, but it, it, it's a tense situation of, of efforts. This is a good point. So do uh, the United States and France, for instance, are, are supporting Argentina or supporting uh, the No, uh, you know, they have to pick sides not based on fundamental uh, uh, basis. Unfortunately, you know, this is why geopolitics rules. They will be on the side of the UK. And Chile probably has a very valid claim, and they are, you know, not making a big deal of it so far. But you know, if they do, the United States and probably most of the, the European countries would say, oh, well, you know, UK has claim." Uh, unfortunately, I don't think it will matter. Mu- unfortunately, I don't think it will matter much because maybe that's important from, uh, you know future, very far in the future geopolitical considerations, but Antarctica is still not, you know, on the front burner of any country. But, you know, uh, in terms of geopolitical considerations, another side is that uh, the Falklands uh, or the Malvinas uh, has a very strong fishing industry. It's 50% of their local economy. And, you know, they, they sell licenses and ships from... Korea or anywhere come in to fish and they, they make money off that. Of course, that, that could be a, a point of conflict beyond petroleum because, you know, oil is, is a very iffy thing. Fishing is, is a real business, yeah, you know, and so that's a, another thing. And, and, of course, there's also this thing that you're talking about a region that even though it's in the middle of a dispute, the locals are, you know, 98 point something percent in favor speak, of remaining speak English. In speaking English, as a matter of fact, the 2013 uh, 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 election uh, vote that they had, you know, forget the the word. Um, 
I think there were only three individuals that voted not to remain with, with the UK. But, you know, it, it's very difficult to, to run a roller uh, over the local population and say, well, you know, no one speaks Spanish, no one wants to be with Argentina, but you, you know, yeah. It, so it's very difficult to imagine that the status quo, which is now a relative peace, it's a disputed peace, but that that will be overturned. So the geopolitical considerations uh, tend to favor, you know, even uh, call it a date tenth or something, but, but it favors remaining like that. And these other considerations, you know, Antarctica and so on, maybe later some discussion with Chile and the UK, and it's possible there that a, a, a different type of negotiation might be arrived at, you know, yeah. joint exploration of uh, Antarctica, that's something else. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about operational and environmental uh, issues. Uh, is it something yeah. that people must take care of, or is it easy, like Brazil well, Coast is easy? That, there's pros and cons. It's not a, a very deep water region. We're talking 500, under 1,000 uh, 1, meters nowadays. That's, you know, easy as pie because uh, we're sure. exploring two or 3,000 meter water depth in the Campos and Santos basins and many other places in the world. And this is not necessarily a very deep water environment, but it is a very rough sea environment. You know that in the North Sea, um, England and, and all the countries that operate there have to have facilities that are very resistant to high seas and winds and waves and this and that, that raises costs that makes operations very difficult. So it's not a need. We, we spoke a while back about the equatorial margin, which is tropical. Yeah. And we said it's very much more difficult to operate in than, for example, the Gulf of Mexico that has hurricanes or the Campos and Santos basins, which has none of that because of very strong currents, very uh, uneven sea bottom uh, and, and so on. So those are pertinent operational considerations that would make uh, exploitation, you know, once you get into the production, difficult. And if you're talking gas, of course, you're going to have to talk about some kind of floating uh, production system. And uh, even if BSO is there considering, you know, it's possible. But then unless you have high scale, if you're talking 80, 100,000 yeah. barrels a day, it's a minimal scale to be economical. It's it's not a, an attractive enough scale to go to an entirely new province. That's a problem. Um, but I think if you give it time, maybe it will because at, at eighty or a hundred dollar uh, oil prices, you know, even if their estimates are very optimistic and, and their actual operational costs are forty or, or whatever, you know, at, at or fifty dollars, it might still be worthwhile for a small operation. And I doubt that they will operate for many years to, to really draw out the three or 400 million barrels that they say are 2P uh, producible reserves yeah. when they file their, their yeah. Uh, statements. Uh, uh, yeah, let, let me go to my last point. Of course, if you have not another point, pl other points, please uh, bring it to us. But uh, my, my, my focus now with you is uh, the, the, the prospects uh, that we yeah. still remain. So. Uh, this discoveries uh, was limited to our small regions, not a yeah. big regions, and probably there are more uh, prospects yeah. that could be explored there. How do well, you yeah, the, the discoveries are, are very focused, but there has been a significant amount of 2D uh, all around the, the region. I can't uh, uh, say exactly how much they covered, but I think there has been enough coverage for um, continuing work on the, the seismic that they have to maybe point new prospects where future drilling could be conducted, probably to the east, you know, or maybe around the, the current discoveries in the north that could come up with additional accumulations. Because I, I stand very much behind the USGS estimate. If they say, oh, there's potentially 5 billion barrels there, I would suggest that it's entirely possible that with more uh, exploration work, we could identify that 
level of, of reserves. Of course, that still doesn't uh, convince me that you would have producible reserves. It's technically producible, but you know, because of all we've spoken about, I think that actual production will be very difficult, will take very long. Yeah. It might even take so long that a lot of that production just won't, won't be discovered. But yes, to the north and to the east, we might have more troopy accumulations. More potential. Uh, why majors are not uh, exploring there? I mean, uh, 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 because uh, in Guyana, for instance, uh, the double of this volume, this is five billion yeah. barrels in Guyana is 10 or 12. Yeah, and, and, and with the potential to go, all but remember, are, yeah. no, but Guyana has a potential to go up to 30s and more. So we're talking a whole different ballgame there. And indeed, I think that's the, the point that I wanted to make in, in terms of going forward. There's a difference between conflicts and conflicts. The conflict that supposedly is, is ongoing between Venezuela and Guyana and so on is, is really very far-fetched, very unlikely that Venezuela will will be able to do anything, Wait. much less try. Um, Argentina is, is maybe crazier, but again, uh, it's it's not so uh, so likely to have a conflict, but it is a conflict. And in that situation, you could really get even a shell or a BP to say, well, why don't you wear the flag and go there? No, they're not crazy. <laughs> you know, Exxon, uh, America, they say the same thing. We have so many things to do in Africa, even in Brazil, in Southeast Asia. You know, there's no, it's very important to consider that there's no lack of prospects in the world, especially when you're talking about relatively small prospects, you know, under 5 billion barrels. There is no lack of prospects in the world. Uh, the problem is how to allocate dollars and confidence of the companies to go into these regions. As I've told you before, East and West Africa already present a doubtful situation of whether it's really worth going in or not, because it's a relatively high country regional risk. And the potential for many of these uh, prospects is uh, around that, you know, three, four, five million barrels in some of these areas that they're discussing. And because it's not so conflicted, maybe they're willing to be there also closer to onshore and able to, to do more. And even, say, even so, they'll, yeah. of course, uh, prefer offshore with an FPSO, you're uh, away from any revolution. But, yeah. you know, it's very hard sell. If any explorationist goes up to a, a major company and the director of exploration and says, oh, we think we should put $3 billion into this. They're going to say, that's the exit door, please. Let me go to my last question, please, uh, in terms of Argentina uh, strategies. What do you believe that should Argentina do in this case? Be quiet, stay quiet? Yes, they should stay quiet because their real potential is not there. Their real potential is uh, the areas offshore close to their uh, uh, mainland, uh, below uh, Uruguay. The same uh, offshore basins that start from Campos and Santos and Uruguay, they extend down into Argentina. And that's where they should be. And that's where they will be able to attract Shell, Exxon, and everybody else they want. And they will not have a problem putting in three, four, or five billion dollars there. Why make waves in this? This is the conclusion that I would like to show. Argentina okay. would be crazy to, you know, make a big deal That's about here. this when they have, you know, easier fruit to pick and much more attractive regions to offer for exploration and, yeah. and of course, large potential. And for Brazil, it's the same. Be quiet, oh, stay quiet. <laughs> yes, <laughs> of course. Uh, there's, uh, they, they they should leave this alone. This is a, a no-win situation for for anybody. You know, why yeah, step right. on, on the ant's nest? Just don't yeah. forget it. Leave it alone. Yeah. And and if we can preserve this kind of big tent, which I think is kind of what will continue, they will yeah. make a claim in the UN this, and then the other one and you claim that. Nothing happens. That's fine. But everybody's happy that they made a claim. Let it die. 40 years from now, because no one will be interested in that anymore. And in the meantime, explore like Uruguay uh, has already started, like even Brazil in the, in the southern region 
has begun to look the last uh, bidding round we had. And Argentina is already there because they have uh, seismic, they have good prospects in, in view. That's where they have to place their bets and offer these regions to the world, to the, to the major oil companies of the world. And that's where they could be successful. Yeah, that's perfect. This is Professor, Professor Cleveland Jones. Thank you so much. It was a great pleasure again. Yeah, good to have some maybe positive suggestions at the end, okay? Good. <laughs> Come on. Very good. You can be hired by Argentina's uh, staff to, to, <laughs> to help them to, to make these strategies. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.